Well, this time next year, you may be able to bet big on the Super Bowl at Washington's tribal casinos. There's also a renewed push at the state level to expand sports betting to smaller card rooms. Camera 7's Michael Spears is live now in Tukwila. And Michael, the pandemic is actually driving new momentum for this. Some lawmakers say the added tax revenue won't save budgets, but will definitely help. A tribal rep, however, argues that the Nevada-based company that owns this non-tribal card room and others would be taking money away from poor communities. This is Wigo! Who doesn't want to bet on the Super Bowl? Washington native and Maverick Gaming CEO Eric Person is betting on a win-win. This area here could be transformed. This is going to be our sports book. You know, you're going to see an LED wall here. The liquor and everything is going to go away. Big bucks for them. We estimate we can raise around $50 million annually in, in taxes. And for cities in the state through a 10% tax on gaming revenue. This is the best type of tax because it's a consumption tax. It doesn't tax the people who don't want to participate in it. Not to mention more jobs on top of the 2,200 people they already employ at their 19 card rooms across Washington. Additional good teamster union jobs in a newly unionized industry. Sports betting that recently started at their Colorado casinos. We'll probably add 10 to 15 employees per property across the state. Maverick Gaming is behind the legislative push to bring sports betting to Washington's non-tribal casinos after the U.S. Supreme Court cleared the way in 2018 for states to okay it. Tax dollars the American Gaming Association called a lifeline during the pandemic. Today, 25 states in the District of Columbia have legalized sports betting, and more are on the way. Our state is still finalizing agreements with tribal casinos for them to start sports betting, which the governor signed into law last March. We respect the rights that the tribes are getting sports betting, so we're not going to go live until their compacts are done. Couldn't come at a worse time for tribes. The Washington Indian Gaming Association that represents tribal casinos is against non-tribal card rooms trying to get in on the action. Just like the state lottery raises revenue, for essential governmental services. That's exactly what uh, tribal gaming does for Indian country. They believe current tax estimates don't add up. The uh, gaming dollars in the state don't support those sorts of claims whatsoever. 783 pro, 1,040 opposed. State lawmakers held a public hearing Thursday. Where are you coming up with these numbers from? Our estimates are founded. In fact, Republican State Senator Curtis King co-sponsored Senate Bill 5212. The tribes, as you know, have have the rights to the casinos and the vast majority of the gambling that goes on with this state, and they make millions of dollars off of that every year. This doesn't touch any of that. As of now, limitations would include not allowing people to bet from home, allowing only card rooms currently licensed to do it, and no betting on in-state collegiate teams. There are also non-tribal interests that are opposed that worry about the existing problem of, of problem gambling and existing impacts of gaming in our state. So uh, I want to listen to all those concerns. Maverick Gaming said they don't want to step on toes. First of all, it's a $100,000 site license. But they do want a piece of the pie. Maverick Game is going to be pushing for this until we bust down that door. The Washington State Gambling Commission says it does have some technical concerns, including some areas of the legislation that lacks clarity that they say they hope to work with lawmakers moving forward to address and said the hope being that sports betting at tribal casinos opens up later this year. Live in Tuckwilla, Michael Spears, Cairo 7 News.